In today's video, we put the finishing touches on the AMS Alpha 9 twin turbo kit for the Audi R8 and Lamborghini Huracan. Welcome back everyone, this is Joe at Forge where I share my passion for creating, building, and racing high performance vehicles. On this channel I do a lot of how-to guides on custom fabrication, product reviews from the vendors that support our builds, as well as toss in some behind the scenes vlogs to show you guys what goes on here at Forge Performance. So if you're new here, thanks for stopping by. And if this is the type of content that you are interested in, please consider subscribing. Now let's get on to the video. Welcome back to the channel everyone, Joe at Forged with our fourth and final video of the installation of the AMS Alpha 9 Audi R8 and Lamborghini Huracan twin turbo kit. So uh, what you've seen in the previous videos, we did an unboxing, then we uh, prepped the car in the first video for all the turbo components to be installed. The second video, we installed the major turbo components in the back and mounted the water tank and water pump. And then in the, the last installment, we did the necessary work to install the intercooler system with the heat exchangers in the front of the car, the intercoolers in the back, and running all the associated lines back and forth on the car. So in the final video in the series, we're moving back to the back of the car to install the exhaust system, the waste gates, the uh, blow-off valves, charge tubes, and then all the associated electronics. So we uh, got a lot to do, but we're gonna finish this all up in one more video before we move on to tuning the vehicle in partnership with AMS on the stock ECU. So with that, let's jump right into it. All right guys, so first things first, we're going to install the uh, charge hoses for the turbochargers goes from the compressor to the intercooler. We're gonna get our final clocking positions for all of that. We'll install the blow-off valves, and then we'll start installing the waste gates, and then ultimately the exhaust. All right, guys, we got the uh, pre-molded silicone couplers from the turbo to the intercooler at uh, final clocking of the turbocharger. Left and right, everything's set up. So next step is installing the waste gates. Okay, so that is the exhaust system. It's fully installed. We got the wastegates oriented. We had to adjust a few things from when we originally installed the adapter pipe from the exhaust header to the turbocharger itself on both sides. So we ended up just kind of re-loosening everything up, 
adjusting the turbo blankets and making sure that everything was clocked absolutely perfectly. This all is a kind of a big jigsaw puzzle and you have to get it to all fit in exactly the right way and it all falls right into place once you got it all lined up. So as you can see, we have the, uh, the tile wastegates installed. They already have the AN fittings for the boost control that's gonna be installed next. And you can see how uh, nice this exhaust system is fit up. It has that uh, merge in the center to give you that sound that everyone's familiar with on these twin turbocharged V10 engines. And you can also see that the exhaust system is braced to the turbo brace. So you are getting a lot of strain relief on this whole system. So nothing's just kind of hanging out there. The other thing we noticed is the way that the wastegates are blended into the exhaust. I've seen some of these kits where the wastegates are kind of going straight in the side there. And on a low pressure setup, that's not super critical, but as you turn the power up, you might run into boost creep issues if, if you don't have uh, all this stuff blended in properly. So we're really impressed with how the system fits up. So next step, we're, you're gonna see us plumb up these wastegates for the boost control, and we'll go from there. All right, guys, what you saw there was Greg plumbing in all of the signal lines for the wastegates. Uh, they're all AN and heat protected, which is a good design element for a system like this. It runs by so much hot stuff. You, you don't want it to be a, you know, a critical element like that to be exposed to high heat and fairly inaccessible once we put everything back together. So the last thing that uh, Greg is doing here is mounting some brackets that'll hold these lines up and out the uh, a little bit further away from the heat. So once we get finished up with that, the next thing you'll see us do is install the uh, blow off valves and get those connected. And then we finally move on to the electronics. Okay, we have the blow-off valves installed, clocked properly. You can see uh, that red really pops on the back here. Got the tile Q valves, and then we route the lines around. You put all the additional heat coating. As you can see, that runs over some hot parts, so they supply all the heat coating. And then uh, you saw Greg uh, do a little bit of work down in here to uh, get our boost reference and vacuum sources to operate the vacuum lines and also wire in one of the uh, boxes so the uh, twin turbo kit will work on the factory computer. So from here we're going to move on to installing the inlets and routing some additional breather lines to those so uh, that's what you'll see next.
we have the alpha dry filters installed, the little intake tubes, and now the breather for the engine. Uh, some kits don't really bother with this, but this definitely uh, is fully thought out and AMS wanted to make sure all the systems still function as intended from uh, the factory. So we added those lines in. You can see where they kind of tee into the intake manifold there for the breathing of the engine and actually pulls some sort of vacuum on those systems like it did from the factory. And you see the passenger side as well. Okay guys, we've got the major systems done on the car. As you can see, uh, Greg just finished up with the blow off valves and the air intakes and routed the associated lines, uh, got the heat shielding on them. And that pretty much wraps up all of the, uh, the big items in the box. Now, the only thing that's left is the electronics. And uh, the first thing to do is wire up the water pump for the intercooler system. And then we'll move into some boost control stuff. Uh, some of it's going to be done in the engine bay and some of it's actually done on the inside of the car. So we'll film some uh, pieces of that. It's going to be pretty involved and don't want to bore you guys to death with uh, some, some wiring of, of some components. But we'll uh, detail that a little bit and then we'll be ready for the next step. All right, guys, we tried to get a uh, decent time lapse there. There's a lot of wiring that has to be done when you're using the factory computer to control the car, which is a pretty cool option. You don't have to go standalone with the AMS kit. They've figured out a solution to use the factory electronics, and they allow you to uh, do some map switching and some other stuff on the factory ECU. So in order to do that, you have to add just a few things. We added a CAN interface so we can add additional messages onto the CAN bus network to control boost control, for example. And that's really what you're seeing uh, done here. Some of those modules that were in the box are uh, just wired in, tapped in for power. Uh, they run around to the front into the glove box for the uh, boost control and then uh, essentially back through the firewall to get to the uh, map sensor resource and the boost control resource. And then continuing through the firewall there, you kind of see some of the routing of this wiring that goes to the, the uh, map resource and then the um, boost control solenoid that's tucked away down in there. And then you also saw Greg wiring in the water pump that goes into this main fuse block uh, distribution panel here. That wraps up all the wiring for the AMS Alpha 9 with the factory ECU, you would still need to wire in the water pump resources, even if you're going with a MoTeC or Cyvex on your car. We've gotten all the wiring done and now we're just moving on to the final finishing touches of the build. So Greg has trimmed out the under pan to fit the uh, wires properly, as you can see here, just getting those last few bolts installed. And then we've also installed the tips on the exhaust and reconfigured everything so everything fits properly. So when we put the bumper on, the tips will come through in the right place. And then really some of the last things that need to happen here is just trim the exhaust heat shield to trim over the uh, turbo kit to keep the heat off the bumper so we don't have to risk melting anything on the bumper. And that's really, that's an optional step again, but we know what heat does to these things after we've been out racing for several years with the GTR platform, and we intend to do the same thing with the R8 and Huracan platform. So we're gonna go ahead and make sure we reinstall that. We'll trim that up, and we'll pretty much be ready for the dyno. Okay, that wraps up the installation portion of the R8 Huracan twin turbo build for the, the AMS Alpha 9 turbo kit. Uh, like I said, uh, Greg is just trimming up this last piece on the exhaust. 
heat shield that needs to be trimmed to put on the car. But uh, we're all done here. Next step is to get the ECUs back in the car that we shipped off to AMS. They have to do a little bit of an unlocking uh, procedure to allow them to be tuned. And then from there, we're gonna be on the dyno. So in the very next video, you're gonna see this thing fired up, making some horsepower. On the dyno, we'll have some interaction back and forth with AMS on how that process goes to get the optimized tune for the factory ECU. And as you can see in the background there, we got the next one lined up, ready to go. So until the next time, we'll see you on the next video.